This is how it ends. Not, not with the whimper, but with the show. Hey Sam. Oh, uh, it's okay. I was gonna tell you a joke about sodium, but nah. <laughs> this is how it ends. Not with a bang, but with my only friend, the end. Hi! Hi. We're gonna play Fizz Bang. Yay! Yes! I'll go first. Okay. One! Two! Fizz! Four! Bang! Fizz. Seven! Eight! Fizz! Bang! Eleven! Fizz! Thirteen! Fourteen! Fizz bang! Sixteen! Seventeen! Fizz! Eight! Hey everyone, this week I wanted to highlight another super cool content creator who is doing some really interesting work. Urban Neurosis, also known as Gem, has a Twitch channel that you should really go and check out. She streams a variety of video and board games including Diablo 3 and a great selection of retro and indie games. Also, she has this really cool feature called Play Positive, which is a diversity and inclusion focused board game stream that happens twice a month on Saturdays. There are links in all of the usual places, so go and follow her and subscribe and everything like that. This is how it ends. Not with a bang, but with the safe word. We ran a poll asking you which made you the most anxious out of a group of four different terrifying scenarios. And with an amazing two thirds of the total votes, the phrase, I need to talk to you, came out as the winner. I think there's a lot we could all learn from this, don't you? Not with a bang, but with a- Hey, so like, have you folks ever thought about the fact that the squids in Splatoon are probably actually the bad guys? Like, they're super prejudiced against the octopus people who just want a way to power their cities and they're not even willing to aid them. They just jump on in and send the preteen cephalopod version of Rambo in to wipe out hundreds of them. And until Marina came along, their rhetoric was like super skeeve. And also, like, what's up with invading the sacred spawning ground of a species who seems to mostly keep to themselves? Themselves, interfering in a centennial egg laying ritual and then stealing their potential babies for some unseen corporate entity. And the modes where you fight against each other are obviously war games, preparing for the next generation of squid kids to go out and be effective killing machines. And don't even get me started on Krusty Sean, he's obviously being deep fried and it's time for the top three. This week we're doing our top three flavors of bubble tea. And if you disagree, which would be really cool, make sure you let us know in the comments. Anyway, number three, honeydew milk green tea with pearls. Number two, royal milk green tea with pearls. And the number one all-time best bubble tea, objectively, is matcha milk tea with pearls. As a werewolf living in a house full of monsters and one human and also whatever the assistants are, there aren't many constants in my life. Still, no matter what Mort is yelling at, or what Braun is spouting conspiracy theories about, or what Corbin is trying to steal, the words of that immortal philosopher, Daria Morgendorfer, always ring true. There is no aspect, no facet, no moment of life that can't be improved with pizza. Which is why this week I'm reviewing what is probably the preeminent interactive pizza delivering experience. Ninja Pizza Girl. Released on the 30th of September 2015 by Australian developer Disparity Games, Ninja Pizza Girl is a fast paced platformer where your goal is to deliver pizzas from your father's pizza shop to your clients before they get cold. Free running through the rooftops and suspended alleyways of a futuristic city that's grown so tall you could live your whole life without ever seeing the ground, you not only have to overcome the environmental obstacles in your path, but also the taunts and bullying of rival Ninja Pizza delivery agents. And that's where we start to find the real beauty behind Ninja Pizza Girl. It's not just a game about delivering pizzas. As an artistic work, we see laid bare the philosophies and intentions of the authors, a strong anti-bullying message, and a tale about emotional resilience in the face of hardship. 
The loading screens you're presented with between levels give you a small taste of the philosophy and thoughts behind the creation of Ninja Pizza Go. Messages that couldn't be sensibly imparted through the story, such as be yourself and the ones you love will love you for it, give players good moral philosophies while the story itself holds important messages of diversity, including trans acceptance and anti-classism. It's great to see a diverse cast of characters here. Your avatar character, Gemma, is a 16-year-old teenage girl and is written really well. She has flaws, but these flaws aren't something we're meant to think are cool. It's made obvious that nobody in the world of Ninja Pizza Girl is perfect. Other characters run a wide range of backgrounds, including trans people, people of colour, people of different body sizes, disabled people. They've really put a lot of thought into their representation. There are also some really great accessibility features, my favourite of which is the fact that the difficulty can be set on a sliding scale. If you're having trouble with one of the gameplay elements, or you find one too easy, the three core challenges can be tweaked individually, meaning you can, for example, set the time pressure lower while making the bullies super harsh. I am also drawn to Ninja Pizza Girl for another reason, because although it isn't stated overtly within the game or any of its supplementary material, Gemma is coded strongly as having ADHD, and the way that this is displayed is brilliant. I've spoken on Twitter about a lack of stimulation causing my mind to become agitated and my body to enter a semi-hibernative state, and in Ninja Pizza Girl, this need for constant engagement is visualised through the vibrancy of the world around you. The more Gemma feels engaged, the better her mood, and the more saturated and wonderful the world around you becomes. Conversely, a lack of engagement causes the brilliance to drain from your surroundings. Everything becomes sepia and bleak, and eventually, the creeping subconscious nasties start to overcome you, and you have to struggle just to keep going. Ultimately, to see a game try to handle the topic of bullying from the perspective of a teenage girl who statistically are likely to have an over 4 in 5 chance of being bullied during their high school years is admirable. Coupled with a likeable and roundly written cast, a unique rationale behind your actions and some well thought out accessibility features, I'd say it's well worth the asking price. This is how it ends. Not with a whimper, but with liking, sharing and subscribing. I feel so dirty.